Uh, this morning we're we're going to be looking at Psalm 140. It's it's one of those psalms that we call the imprecatory psalms. Um, that's a that's a long fancy word for basically when a psalmist is crying out that God would would bring judgment, would bring wrath, would uh, defend the cause of the just or the righteous, and bring down uh, those who are are plotting evil. And But I thought it would be a good way to start this morning uh, just by recognizing that that uh, all glory goes to God. And this, this old hymn came to my mind, and I may not do it the way that you grew up doing it, but that's okay. To God be the glory, great things He had done, so love He the world that He gave us His Son. Revealed in His life and atonement for sin, and opened the light gates that all got a couple of the words. Psalm 140, an imprecatory psalm that David is crying out. And um, I think it's good for us to read the imprecatory psalms. I think it's good for us to um, uh, to meditate on them to, to and even to pray them. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but there's a date in my Bible at the margin of this psalm. It's February 28, 2013. And I remember very distinctly uh, circling the first three verses because I myself was in a situation in my life at this time, and it's just too graphic to even go into. But I literally felt what David was feeling when he was praying this prayer to God. He begins by saying, Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts and stir up wars continually. They make their tongue sharp as a serpent, and under their lips is the venom of asp. Now here, 
David is describing those evil men that were plotting against him continually to bring him down. And I think David's psalm in this when he's crying out, there are two contexts we have to keep in mind. Number one, he was praying for himself personally. Uh, there were literally evil men who were trying to take his life. But secondly, we have to recognize that David was the anointed king of Israel, God's chosen people. And the effects uh, of, of the, the things that, that these men were bringing against David not only affected him personally, but also affected the kingdom as well. And so David is praying that, that God would protect him, that he'd guard him, and he describes how these men are. Verse 4, he says, Guard me, O Lord, from the hand of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have planned to trip up my feet. The arrogant have hidden a trap for me, and with cords they have spread a net. Beside the way they have set snares for me. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear to the voice of my pleas for mercy, O God. So he's crying out that God would see him in his condition and state and that God would extend his mercy, that, that God would preserve him in the midst of this. And then he says to the Lord in verse 6, I say to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear to the voice of my pleas for mercy, O Lord. O Lord, my Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. And so David acknowledges, recognizes God, that he is the strength in his salvation. And here the word salvation isn't pertaining to eternal salvation, but to his deliverance. God, you are the strength of my deliverance. David recognized that within himself, again, of his own means, he had no way to rescue himself, but that God had to be his deliverer. God had to be his salvation. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further their evil plot, or they will be exalted. God, stop the evil worker. God, do whatever is necessary to stop those that are plotting evil. Now, this is where we have to pause for just a minute and, and ask the question, is it okay to pray and ask God to bring whatever he has to bear uh, to bring down the wicked, um, to stop them? And and, and it's a prayer that, that we have to recognize that when we pray that, um, it, it, it can be devastating to those that we're praying against. And, and one of the things that I'm mindful of when, when we pray these types of prayers is that, number one, we have to recognize that, that we, too, were once enemies of God. We were not saved, and we were enemies of God. And thank God for his mercy that he did not bring judgment or we would be eternally lost. And so we have to bear in mind that when we pray for God's judgment in this way, that, that, um, that at that day of judgment, there is no second opportunity. Um, when, we, when we pray the prayer, Lord Jesus, come quickly, we have to recognize that when we're praying and asking the Lord Jesus to come quickly, that what we're really praying behind that is that we're praying for his judgment as well. Because on that great day when Jesus comes, he is going to judge all of the earth. He's going to judge wickedness. He's going to judge evil. And there will be no second chances in that day. And so, um, so yes, it's okay to, to pray these types of prayers, but we have to recognize that uh, that we too were once enemies of God. The second thing we have to try to discern is, uh, are we praying that prayer for our own personal, um, our own personal uh, good? Are we praying those prayers uh, in, in our assessment of what is evil? Or, or are we praying those prayers in the assessment of what God's word says is evil? Sometimes we, uh, we don't recognize that we may be at fault when those come against us, and we don't want to recognize our own fault. So it's a careful prayer that we have to pray. Um, it's, it's a discerning prayer. It's a prayer that we have to look at our own hearts. And lastly, we have to recognize that, that God alone is sovereign, and God alone is the righteous judge, and God will bring justice. Um, a lot of my prayers lately, uh, and, and for a long time, have been praying for the evil that I see in our land. Uh, the evil such as the taking of innocent life, 
especially the life of the unborn. And I pray, I, I do pray, God, would you stop those, take what, whatever means necessary to stop those, God, who are, uh, who are promoting the taking of innocent life and the unborn. And yeah, that means our legislatures. And, and I pray, God, would you stop that evil, God, of the taking of life, God. God, we recognize that God has judged nations in the past for that very same sin. And God's judgment is being poured out already. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 1. And we would pray that, that God would stop these evil men and these evil women. I pray that, that God would, would stop those who are tearing down the institution of marriage as God has established it. Um, and, and I know that we are not a theocracy of a nation. We are a democracy. We're, we're a republic. But there are those who make decisions in that. And I pray that God would stop them, that God would bring them down. Uh, but yet at the same time, God, would you have mercy? And would you save them? Would you turn their hearts from that? And so, yes, it is right, righteous to pray these imprecatory prayers and psalms that, that God would stop the evil um, so that the gospel, uh, the, the body of Christ, you know, we're, we're reminded Jesus told us to pray for those who persecute us. Uh, but we can also pray for deliverance from them, but pray for them as well. And so there's that tension in these prayers that we have. Uh, verse 9, he says, uh, As for the head of those who surround me, let the mischief of their lips overwhelm them. Let the burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into fire, into miry pits, no more to rise. Let not the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil hunt down the violent man speedily. And if you take these three verses, what David is saying, let, the, let them be caught up in their own trap. Let them eat each other up uh, so that they might come to destruction, God. Uh, cut off the head of that and, and let them turn against each other, God, that you would spare the righteous. And then he uh, concludes in verses 12 and 13. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and will execute justice for the needy. David is confident that God will execute justice, that God will defend the cause of the afflicted. And again, David is looking in his day, but he's also looking to the future. And we look to the future when Jesus does come and establish his kingdom, uh, his literal reign in Jerusalem for a thousand years there in that millennial kingdom, that, that right justice would be meted out. Surely the righteous, verse 13, shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. And here, again, is a closing confidence. Surely... He says, the righteous shall give thanks to your name. And so give thanks to him this morning. And um, the application, I think, for us uh, as believers is, number one, recognize that we too are enemies of God. But God in his grace and his mercy has saved us. We didn't do anything to save ourselves. We were enemies against God. God saved us. Thank God that he spared his wrath and his judgment. And it was delayed um, so that you and I might come to know him. Let's continue to pray. Yes, Lord Jesus, come and establish righteousness. However, God, uh, would, you, would, you, would you call your elect? God, would you bring those to salvation um, and, 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 and delay your judgment so that they might uh, be saved? And we need to recognize that there are those in our life, and they may be good people, uh, but apart from the saving grace of Christ, apart from them receiving redemption through Jesus Christ, they are damned for all of eternity. And so pray that God gives you the opportunity to, to graciously share uh, the, the gospel love of Christ with them so that they might uh, come to know Christ. Be intentional, um, be loving, um, uh, be listening, uh, not just speaking, but, but share in grace. Um, uh, I want to close with this old song, um, What a Day That Will Be. There is coming a day When no heartache shall come No more clouds in the sky No more tears to dim the eye All is peace forevermore 
that happy golden shore What a day, glorious day that will be What a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see And I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. There'll be no more sorrow there, no more burdens there to bear, no more sickness, no more pain. More parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, and I look. By his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. One more time, what a day, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face the one who saved me by his grace when he takes me by the hand leads me through that promised land what a day glorious day that will be when he takes Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Have a great day, I pray. And remember to share Christ with somebody today. I love you. God bless you. Bye.